Hello there, Flegel Floggle here, and today I'm going to be reviewing an album by Bob Dylan, and this is Highway 61 Revisited. This was released on August the 30th, 1965, and was his sixth album. It got number three in the US and number four in the UK, which is pretty good. Um, eight days overall was spent actually recording this, which I think is amazing really, with the amount of quality tracks on it, just shows the rabbit spurs of creativity in mind that Bob Dylan had. And not only this, but it is known as one of the best albums ever made, and I don't agree with this, but I certainly think for its time it's one of the most innovative. So, um, like bringing it all back home, it includes more of the electric guitars, which obviously is different from the early albums like Bring It All, uh, Bring it all Back Home. You're not bringing it all back home. You're Freewheel and Bob Dylan. And uh, another side, the, these times are a changing and the self titled debut album. And although I think it was mastered with um, Blonde on Blonde. I uh, still think that's a great sort of thing to have because of uh, more percussion and organs and more filling kind of drums makes it more enjoyable not just for listening to the amazing stories and poetry that Dylan uses but also just contain great melodies that backs it up and it's just like it's all for sort of background music. So anyways enough jibber jabber let's get on with a song which is like a rolling stone and many people think this is one of the best songs of all time uh, and okay I'm gonna agree I'm not gonna be off it's 9.6 not as good as no I'll agree it's one of the best songs ever Rolling Stone magazine voted it as the best song ever but I suppose that's why they named the song after um, well overall the, the song is probably one of his most popular as well the song is about Dylan's partner who leaves him, and it's all really about like kind of like a revenge and anger kind of thing. Above the recognisable kind of organ and the guitar tunes played, above that comes a song that contains many excellent quotables, uh, mainly the chorus and the uh, Dylan what he uses in the resultful kind of mockeries and having just a great flow and makes it all really rememberable. One of the lyrics is uh, with no direction home from the chorus and was used with a great documentary that they made and is the seventh installment of the bootleg series. So overall the chorus is one of the most classic things ever. Everything is absolutely classic for it and just overall contains such a spark of excitement and adrenaline into it. I personally think it deserves a 10 out of 10. Yeah. Tombstone. Blues involves uh, the guitars even more, making them really a big part with it, and certainly as well the drums, to make it a really funky, groove and kind of folk song. The meaning is pretty hard to grasp. It's one of them, leave it up to the listener and use their imagination and do it, kind of, that kind of thing. But it's got really obscure and avant-garde kind of lyrics, like, as the sun. The sun's not yellow, it's chicken. And I think it just all really four plays a feel of kind of a... Huh? The, the chorus probably is the best idea to grasp. Basically, it's having Dylan's family and himself in a desperate kind of survival. The father's looking for food, and he's in the kitchen looking for the tombstone blues, and stuff like that. Really enjoyable lyrics, a great grooving tune, and this makes a definite also another track pick. Is a 9.4 out of 10. It takes a lot to laugh and it takes a train to cry is a more mellow sounding song that settles down to an easy and less complicated and compelling kind of feel. But forgetting this, Dylan's vocals becomes a really bigger centre of attention, having a less of the cronier voice and really more tuneful, which is sort of get on Nashville skyline and self portrait. <laughs> The lyrics are slower, which makes it easier to follow, you know, when listening, and is a simple love song, really, uh, with Dylan's, how he controls his lover, and after a pretty short kind of chorus and stuff like that, comes a long harmonica solo, 
which is really nice, but to be honest, I'd rather prefer more lyrics. But, oh well, it's still an 8.7 out of 10, I mean, it's pretty damn good. From a Bwix, how do you say Bwix, it's, it's like some sort of card, and it quickly snaps into place really with a faster feel and a more compelling bass and organ melody with a similar style to uh, like a Rolling Stone. The tune is pretty repetitive and um, it only really changes obviously with the lyrics and the harmonica but it's over, just over three minutes so I'm not gonna exactly gonna expect like a really big awesome story like Brownsville Girl or something like that but oh well it's still an 8.4 out of 10. Queen Jane approximately is what I think is the Rolling Stone, uh, the Rolling Stones, like a Rolling Stone Part Two, covers similar ground of a lover who's left him, um, you know, like Rolling Stone. But this song is more pleasant in a sense of it's like a dreamier and more relaxing. Uh, it's got more melodic kind of tunes that played, and it's probably the probably the most relaxing song on the album, really. Just really nice to listen to. It's not that kind of thing. Once again, as I usually say. Where you have it in the car, and you just look out the window and enjoy the views. And it deserves a 9 out of 10. Self titled Highway 61 Revisited has another similar style, but not to this, but off bringing it all back home's first song, Subterranean Homesick Blues. I sort of feel like this in its tempo and the sort of nasally voice that he brings on. But apart from this, the lyrics are pretty damn strange. The main thing that captures my attention is a random playing of the kazoo whistly thing. And the second thing is the lyrics. It has five biblical terms involved in different stanzas from the Bible, like God telling Abraham to kill his son and such. With all these things uh, added up to one thing, they are all supposed to be happening in Highway 61. Pretty strange, but I like it. 9.5 out of 10. Just like Tom's Phone Blues was used as the B-side to I Want You, which I think was pretty weird as a year later that was used for Blonde on Blonde. Where did this come from? Anyways, um, Tom's Phone Blues. This song is very whimsical and contains a very nice soothing guitars and pianos, which also contributes well with Dylan singing and that kind of settling down feel. The lyrics are about life on the road and finding him a town, seeing women, drinking, eventually getting sick of it all and all going home. Not much to really say, just another compelling kind of song that's a yet another welcome addition to the album. Fit into the lazy long drive kind of thing and overall really good. That's 8.6 out of 10. The final track is Desolation Raw. And as many of you might find, well some of you, I'm, I'm not the biggest guy on YouTube, might find that I occasionally find in my reviews a song that is hard to describe. Desolation Raw is one of the same things. This is completely acoustic driven and just is sort of back to the kind of thing with just acoustic and harmonica and Dylan. But it's different from the earlier kind of sides because this is a lot more experimental. This song is over 11 minutes long and tells a very epic tale that I can't really go into too much because I'll just. it'll take us a while. But the basic gist really is. I don't know, it's like loads of different stories and different verses, mostly looking at the kind of thing like. Uh, you, like childhood kind of things, like I don't know. It's, it's hard. It's just what you usually have, and the thing that I want really like to review an early kind of Dylan, because really, apart from talking about the acoustic guitar and vocals, all I have really left to talk about is the lyrics, and the lyrics are something that a person should just interpret it on themselves and I can't really review lyrics I don't know, it's hard, it's very hard but uh, all I'll say is look at all these bloody lyrics you see this is the kind of thing that I like about Dull Bob Bob Bla 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 Bob Dylan you know you, you can have 
all these lyrics and you could probably put them on a book and it'd be like sort of a good read as themselves, never mind a really good song. But like I say, God, look at all the... As said, Desolation Raw is only what the listener interprets. And personally, I interpret it as a really big masterpiece. There isn't really a chorus apart from saying uh, P or she looks or views or peaks, it's Desolation Raw. And really, the reason why I can't really say it's what, uh, from what people can see in themselves is what is Desolation Raw? It's not really explained. Is it some sort of imaginary place like heaven or is it like an omen or something? You don't know, but I think Desolation Raw has excellent acoustic. I think it's beautifully played and you know Dylan's voice, I can't, I can't really say it's amazing. I mean, he's not exactly famous for having a beautiful voice. You know, he's not the best, I'll say, but I think it suits him as well. Um, does it feel like it's really long? A bit, but I'm not complaining. I just think it's a really good ending. I, I, I sort of like having something really long winded, you know, that kind of thing. I think it sort of suits an ending. And I think it's, again, an excellent thing. And here's a new thing we're having an album that has two 10 out of 10s. So let's wrap up our thoughts on Highway 61 review. Is it my favourite Bob Dylan album? You know what? I'd like to say yes, but personally I prefer Blonde on Blonde. But that's not saying oh, it's bad. It's still a brilliant album, and it's probably my second favourite. Probably my second favourite. I know, there's blood on the tracks in there. Well, third favourite's still good, you know, and that's basically... All I can say, if you want an album that uh, captivates you not only with really good lyrics and really good tunes, if you're a fan of the folk genre, I'd be very surprised if you haven't got this album already, really. But if you haven't and you're just starting to get into Dylan, sure, I recommend this. I mean, he has really different phases, you know, he has the acoustic... And then this kind of thing then goes back to the acoustic really thing. But I think this has a good range, you know, acoustic and like uh, more of the band. So yeah, I think this is a good place to start. And overall, I give it a 9.4 out of 10. It's an excellent album and I really recommend it. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a good day or whenever you're watching this. And bye-bye.